Hello guys and girls. I couldn't help myself, could I? I just had to do my usual trick with the car and completely strip it <laughs> to clean it. Completely strip it out, clean up all the soundproofing, all the carpet. Wow, that air's humid. Yeah. <laughs> Heaters on this car work amazingly well. It's just a shame it's so dark, you can't see how good a job I've done on this car. So yeah, um, the proud owner of the car is actually with me and he's been working on it. Well, soon to be owner of the car, he does know now. That's the, uh, the brother. And this is going to be his car. The funny squeaking sound you can hear is actually the exhaust rubbing underneath. As soon as you move the exhaust it stops doing it. But uh, it, is, it is missing a couple of exhaust rubbers from underneath the car, which I can soon acquire from somewhere. But uh, yeah, in, in terms of cleaning it though, we have not the outside of the car, but we have the inside. Just, uh, as you remember, it was all full of sticks and whatnot, so it's all been cleaned out. We've brushed it all out. Literally had the, uh, the hose pipe in here and just was squirting uh, water and washing up liquid, and we just cleaned it as you would clean the outside of the car. But only the inside, we use washing up liquid. Uh, probably not supposed to use washing up liquid, but that's what we used all the same. Uh, doesn't really matter that much, but um, whatever. It's uh, it's it's all nice and clean now. So it was. It was like a thick dust inside it. Ah, better torch. Wonderful. Oh, that's much better. Camera's like whoa. But yeah. Uh, that's a lot cleaner than it was. Yeah, those are sticks, sticks and leaves in the back. I tell you, wow, that dark patch over there comes up really dark on the camera. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. That that dark patch is just where the um, the carpet of the car has got like a little rubber pad on it, and the 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 the, the paint or whatever it is on the rubber pad is actually rubbed off. And gone on to the uh, under seal, the under soundproofing stuff. It actually doesn't look that dark in actual. <laughs> it must only reflect a certain light, what only the camera can pick up. Yeah, it's clean, all nice and clean. The doors, all the sides. This seat belt here, as you can see that, I have got to change that seat belt. As you can see, it's frayed. And I can actually poke my finger through the belt. So that's, a, that's an instant failure on the MOT. But I've got a replacement, so... Uh, yeah. If you actually want to know the colour code of the car, guys and girls, let's just open the boot up. I'll just show you the colour code. It is... That's the colour code of the car. Rojo Rally. I'm guessing uh, it's probably the. I mean, I haven't had a look yet, huh? Isn't if that's. Oh, it is. It looks like someone has polished the car at some point in time and left the polish on the car. <laughs> yeah. It needs a polish again. You can just see the difference between the inside colour. On the outside colour. If you can, if you compare uh, this bit here, that bit there, to the outside of the car just here, you can see how faded the paint has gone. But um, with, with with some colour restorer, auto glim or something like that, I'm not going to use T-cut on the car. I'm going to use something else. T-cut can do quite uh, quite a bit of damage to a car. Uh, so I'm not going to use a, a, tea, a tea cut. I'm going to use some uh, nice, smooth colour restorer. But yeah, it's uh, it wasn't a necessary thing to do, but being as the car's down here, and you know, we may as well clean it out for what it takes. I mean, <laughs> uh, no bolts on the seats to hold the seats in. It's just the runners that hold the seats in. 
you just have to hammer, ha hammer well, you know, soft hammer a tab down. The whole seat pulls all the way back and you can take the seat out. Lovely. Um, the carpet on the back is held in with three screws. The standard um, sill covers, the inside sill covers, um, on the front of the doors and along the doors, uh, and under the seat belt mounts, and the carpet will just lift out as easy as that. It is just that easy to lift out. Uh, so we're going to clean that up at some point in time. Um, the carpet must be down there somewhere. Uh, the boot carpet, we're going to clean that up, uh, so that's going to get put back in. The idea with this car is it's going to be uh, just put back to how it was, um, just, you know, cleaned up. And uh, we're just going to try and uh, take out any flaws it's got, like uh, on the paintwork, any blemishes. You know, it should be a nice easy, easy colour to respray because it's red. It's not, um, it's not, uh, what's the name of it again? It's not faded really. What? It's not metallic either. Yeah, that's right, it's not, not metallic. It has faded a little bit, but nothing major. But it's, uh, it's not metallic. But yeah, it's, apart from that, as you can hear, the engine's running pretty nice. It's been ticking over for eight. Yeah, it's been ticking over for about... How long? At least half an hour. Yeah. Do we put in the uh, red somewhere? Let's go there. <laughs> Is the bonnet open? Uh, oh, wonderful. Just put the bonnet thing up for us, Alex. Top there. Can you hold the torch for me? And uh, all the mayo that was in the oil filler has now gone. I've, uh, you can see, it's just water, water around it. And I took all the mayo out, and all these long runs we give in the engine, it's not actually producing any mayo. It's, it's actually running quite nice. If you look in there, when you get the light the right, you can just see the valve mounts up and down. That awesome. Ah, push rod engines. And I have done a compression check on the engine. I don't know if I've done this in the other videos. But um, number two, three, and four cylinders. Sorry, when I, when I did the first compression check, all four cylinders read 175 psi but when i went to recheck the recheck as you do you, you, you recheck again you, you do it a few times this is with all the spark plugs out of the cylinder obviously you don't do a compression check with all the spark plugs in it uh the number one cylinder read 140 psi and all the others read 175 which was a bit weird um and i didn't do it again after that so i, I don't know if it was just um, if it was just me, uh, read, read it wrong because we've only got a pushing uh, a pushing um, what's it called compression tester. Uh, we used to have a screwing one, but I can't remember where the hell it went to. But uh, so all we can use now is some pushing one. So it probably wasn't making a proper seal at the time. But uh, we're going to run it around and just uh, we're going to order a head gasket for it anyway. Um, yeah, because we're going to order, order it, a head gasket for it anyway, and then uh, if it does go on us, we've got it already, already there. What I don't know is, on this engine, if you have to replace the bolts or not. I don't even know if the stretch bolts on this engine. Um, I'm not sure what. Oh yeah, we sorted out the annoying fan belt squeak as well. And as you can see, the alternator is working fine. That was the, uh, the wire we had to replace, this one here. The big thick red wire. You can actually see where it was arcing out. All along there. But I can't see what it sparked onto. You can't see anywhere where it hit. But whatever, it's uh, it's working fine now anyway, so sadly that is a new alternator. We've had to put a new one on, the old one. Well, Absolutely toasted. Toasted, yeah, wasn't it just? Yeah. <coughs> Sadly, I didn't have my cam with me at the time, but we took it to bits, the old one, didn't we? Yeah. All the coils were fine, 
but the diode bridge, the bridge rectifier, the, uh, the, six di the, the six diodes of the bridge rectifier, was absolutely toasted, wasn't it? Completely gone. It was just absolutely toasted. Yeah, you couldn't believe how bad that was. Great as well. Yeah, it smelled it terrible. Electric. Yeah. So, um, long headlight. So, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've got to get, well, I've not got to get anything, it's all fixed. <laughs> as you can hear, the engine's running sweet, as sweet as anything. It runs fine, the throttle response is awesome. I can't squeeze it in all the way because uh, it's a bit hard to get into. But uh, yeah, the engine runs really good. Um, yeah, headlight. I don't know if any of you guys can help me out, but I'm looking for a new headlight for this thing or a replacement second-hand one. Now I, I don't mind it coming from from overseas, but the thing is, it's got to be for a right-hand drive car, or should I say, left-hand traffic. It must be for left-hand traffic. So the beam of the car, as you're looking at the car, it, the beam must point that way. It can't point that way, it must point that way. On most of these headlights, there's actually a, an arrow on them that tells you which way it points. Uh, there you go, look, there's an arrow just there, if you can see that. There you go, look, you can see it just there. And that arrow points that way. So the light pattern on this end, on this car points, if we're looking from the car, which you can't see much of, it points that way. Um, and obviously that's all done by reflectors and, and whatnot. But with it having smashed glass, I think the beam pattern on this car would be, would be that off. It, uh, it would not pass an MOT with the headlight in its condition, which is, a, which is a shame. I still think the car has an MOT on it, but I won't know until I get the paperwork back. Now, uh, I know the car is still registered as being insured, although he's obviously cancelled the insurance on it, but it does take about uh, two or three weeks for the insurance to actually come through as cancelled. But uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's great, but like I say, if anyone knows where I can get a headlight from, this is for a right-hand drive car, left-hand traffic, I would be very grateful. Uh, especially if you can, uh, if you so have a car that you're, uh, you're braking or anything, and you, you know, you want the cash for it, uh, let me know and I'll, I can pay you through PayPal, easy, easy peasy, as long as you'll, uh, you'll ship the light to me. That's great. Uh, other than that, what I do need for a set of Marbella is is another wing mirror, or uh, two two wing mirrors that will fit this uh, this pattern. Uh, so it's got to be you know uh, that that far apart. I don't want to start drilling any more holes into these doors because uh, well any holes at all it hasn't got any holes in it at the moment. But the door itself is absolutely awesome. There's no rust in it whatsoever. Even under the plastic panels which I've taken off, there's no rust whatsoever in it. So it's. Uh, Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, guys and girls, my camera's flashing at me, telling me I've got no uh, no memory left, so uh, I'm down to using a two gig memory card, sadly, um, because my 16 gig memory card's decided not to uh, not to work in my camera anymore. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, just another thing I've got to do. The rubber bung in that has actually uh, pushed through. But uh, I'm going to rust treat all in there and paint, repaint it all from the inside and the outside and pull the bung, bung, bung back through. But anyway, I'm going to uh, go now, guys and girls. I wish you farewell and peace out. Catch you on the next video log. Bye for now.